Okay, here we are on chapter five of Lulu and the Brontosaurus. But Lulu hadn't forgotten that she was going to get herself a Brontosaurus. And luckily for Lulu, there was a great big forest not too far from her house. The animals in that forest had never bothered anybody because nobody ever bothered them. But watch out, creatures. Here came Lulu, trudging through the forest, swinging her small suitcase back and forth, and in quite a loud voice that was sure to wake up the napping animals from their naps, singing this song. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna get a bronta, 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 brontosaurus for a pet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna get a bronta, 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 brontosaurus for a pet. The forest that Lulu was trudging through was overgrown with trees whose branches scratched her face and whose roots she tripped over. But Lulu hardly noticed because she was thinking just one thought. And you know what that was. So on she went, swinging her suitcase and singing her song too loud and annoying all the creatures in the forest until, I'm sorry, I just messed up, um, singing her song too loud and annoying all the creatures in the forest and being the same big pain out there she was back home in her house until, you see this page? Mm. Slithering down from the branch of a tree came a long, fat, brown, black snake who had been peacefully snoozing till Lulu woke him up. Sleepy and grumpy and hissing an exceedingly nasty hiss, he wrapped himself around Lulu, around and around and tighter and tighter, and told her that she'd really be sorry that she had awakened him. I'm going to squeeze you dead, he said. Okay, so snakes don't talk, but in my story they do. And Lulu said, Not if I squeeze you deader. So Lulu squeezed the snake hard, and the snake yelled, Ow! and quickly unwrapped himself from Lulu. And Lulu, wiping some snake sweat from the palms of her snake-squeezing hands, went on trudging deeper into the forest. Chapter 6 I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna get a bronta, 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 brontosaurus for a pet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna get a bronta, 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 brontosaurus for a pet. Singing her brontosaurus song in a louder and louder voice, Lulu was waking up nappers all over the forest. Some were annoyed, some were extremely annoyed. Among the extremely annoyed was a silky, slinky lady tiger who yawned and stretched and rubbed her bright green eyes and then with a ferocious roar sprung out from behind some trees and pounced on Lulu. You big pain, the tiger said. I'm gonna eat you for my afternoon snack. Uh-uh, said Lulu. I'm bonking you on the head. And, swinging with all her might, Lulu bonked the tiger with her suitcase. The tiger yelled, Ow! and fell down in a pitiful black and orange striped heap on the forest floor. Lulu brushed off a few tiger hairs that were stuck to the side of her tiger-bonking suitcase and went on trudging deeper into the forest. Chapter 7. As the afternoon turned into late afternoon and then into early evening, Lulu trudged ever deeper into the forest. When she felt hungry, she opened her suitcase and took out a pickle sandwich. When she felt cold, she took out a sweater and socks. And when it got buggy, she opened her suitcase and took out some bug spray and sprayed. She was feeling a little tired, but she kept trudging and swinging her suitcase and singing her song. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna get a bronta, 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 brontosaurus for a pet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna get a bronta, 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 brontosaurus for a pet. Now, a big black bear who liked listening to the music that insects make in the early evening couldn't hear their song because Lulu's was louder. Plus, a lot of the insects were deader because Lulu kept on spraying them with her spray. This made him mad. Then, 
matter. Then, madder than that, he growled a thunderous growl, and then he lumbered heavily down the forest path and stood on his two hind legs in front of Lulu. Waving a big clawy claw, in, I'm sorry, clawy paw in her face, he said, You're interrupting my favorite program. Please don't give an argument. In my story, bears are allowed to have favorite programs. So I'm going to scratch you to pieces with my claws. Lulu glared at the big black bear and put her hands on her hips. Nobody's scratching me, she told the bear. Then she jumped as high as she possibly could in the air. Then she landed as hard as she possibly could on his foot. The bear yelled, ow, and went limping away as fast as a bear could limp with one stomped foot. After shaking some broken bear toenails off the bottoms of her bear stomping shoes, Lulu went trudging deeper into the forest. Chapter 8 Lulu was now in the deepest, darkest, quietest part of the forest. It was getting quite late and she was getting quite tired. She took her sleeping bag out of her suitcase, spread it on the ground, and lay down deep. So, lay down to sleep. But before she slept, she sang her song once more. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna get a bronta, 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 brontosaurus for a pet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna get a bronta, 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 brontosaurus for a pet. Actually, she never even got to sing the last line because before she could get to it, she was sleeping. Chapter 8 and 1 half. At dawn, Lulu woke to the sound of birds calling to one another and the dusky, musky smell of the forest floor and the feel of a gentle late summer breeze blowing across her face. And the taste, because she hadn't bothered to brush her teeth before bedtime, of yesterday's pickle sandwich. She also woke to the sight of something so huge, so enormous, so utterly gigantic, that she thought, no, she was sure that she was still dreaming. It looked like a mountain, except this mountain had legs, a very long neck, and a very small head. It was as I'm sure you've already figured out, the brontosaurus that Lulu had been searching for. Chapter 9 is where we will end for today. So she finally found her brontosaurus, and next time we'll find out what happens now that she's found him. See you next time.